back. So welcome back to C14 at the Science on Stage Festival. As you'll see, I tricked all you guys to coming to my stand. Uh, it was busy at the festival, but I set it all up here again to go. And as hopefully a lot of you know already, what I was presenting was experiment share meetings, which you're at one right now to sample it. So I thought it'd be a great idea for us to try and share some of the great experiments we learned at the festival and already start sharing with a wider public than those who were there in presence at the festival. I'm excited. There's two people who I think signed up to share something today who are only at the festival via Zoom. A lot of you guys probably noticed me walking around sharing some of the stands with you. Like I know I visited Ruth's stand. I kept trying to visit Adrian and Paul, but they always had crowds around them. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm really looking forward to all the experiments we'll see today. And uh, to start things off, Paul's going to, Paul, agree to say a couple of words about science on stage. Uh, so, Paul, can you please explain for those who weren't with us uh, what science on stage is and why we're celebrating these experiments? Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Michael. Yeah, um, if anyone was listening to us there earlier on, you will have heard us say that we're a little bit tired still this week. And that's because we all met up in Prague and we left this day week. So what is science on stage? Well, it's a network of science teachers and we meet every two years for our festival. So we met in the beautiful city of, of Prague last week. There was nearly 400 teachers and there was well over 250 stalls or stands. Now, science on stage gives the wrong impression. It sounds like that we're all hopping on a big stage and uh, we have lots to say and performances. Um, it's not. It's all about the sharing. OK, and that's why I'm delighted that Michael asked me just to say a couple of words, because he has his experiment share, which fits in very well. Now, uh, I know that uh, there are people on this call who are not from the 35 countries that are involved in science on stage so uh, they are still very welcome and we hope that science on stage will encourage them to share their experiments through different avenues so if you weren't at science on stage you can have a look at the science on stage website and either myself or michael will post some links in the next little while into the chat um, you can see the posters from each of the stands uh, we run webinars throughout the year, and you're all very invited to attend those webinars as well. And I'm from Ireland. I'm speaking to you from Dublin. So I'm going to give a special shout out to the resources that we produce. We produce uh, these booklets and videos that you can download totally free. And we're working already on our next edition of our booklets, which is how, how we share. And Michael's grabbing his, um, I should have autographed those for you, uh, Michael, and, and reduced the value of them. But <laughs> that, that would have been great. I'll, we'll, we'll need to meet up again and I'll get them signed by you then. Yeah, but we're constantly adding new countries. The, the, the reach of Science on Stage is about 100,000 teachers per year. And the countries stretch right out into Kazakhstan, right over into Eastern um, Europe. It also stretches over to Canada, which is uh, an unusual um, definition of Europe that I won't go into at the moment. But we're also looking at replicating the model for South America. So if any of you are joining us from South America at the moment, please do uh, watch out. If you want to contact me, I'll put in my uh, email into the chat because we are hoping to go to Science on Stage International because uh, it has been successful. With that, I'm going to hand back to Michael and I'll, I'll get those links and put them into chat for people. Perfect. Uh, thank you again, Paul. And sorry I didn't get around to uh, sending any of the links while you were mentioning links. I was kind of busy uh, keeping track of late arrivals. And also, I remembered while Paul was talking, there's a couple of things I meant to say at the beginning that I completely forgot, because uh, I get excited welcoming everyone, and then I forget some of the things I want to say. Um, so as I mentioned in the email I sent out, if you're not shy, please keep your camera on, because it's always nice seeing people. 
if you are shy or you have like if you're on a metered data connection or whatnot don't feel that you have to also if you haven't yet done so please feel encouraged to say hi in the chat and mention where you're joining from because it's always exciting to see all the different places uh people are joining from uh there's also a um i forgot what i was about to say there never mind uh that's enough talking now let's get on with some of the experiments so one of the things I'm trying to pilot today, and I, I think it's a bit of a silly idea, so feel free to let me know if you don't think it works well and it's not worth trying, is to try synchronized experiments. And this is something I thought of uh, a while ago, but it really came up uh, during my stand. Uh, when I got back from presenting some experiments on stage, uh, Laszlo from Hungary, who was at the stand next to me, he showed me a couple of things that were the exact same things I'd done yeah, on stage. Cool. So we had a couple of uh, fun times Two, presenting things together. One. So I've invited, I think, four people who are on this uh, yeah, experiment yeah. chair to do an, one of their experiments that I liked and I want to repeat, and I want to do it in unison with them. So the first one I've invited is Root from uh, Portugal, and she had a wonderful project, Nature Answers, where all of the, like, all the things we're looking at were how we can mimic nature and use design that works in nature in man-made things. And so it's just a really short, quick one with some flowers that'll bloom in water. Ruth, do you have things ready to do this synchronized with me? Perfect, so I'm, I'm going to add the spotlight. So everyone should be able to see both of us spotlight. You should see like both of our screens together. And um, I, I guess, cause I'm sharing it for us, I'll explain it. Well, should we just, should we go ahead and show it and then explain what happens afterwards? Okay. Sorry, I'm in my bedroom, my tiny bedroom. I'm not allowed to go outside. So <laughs> I hope this is not going to be a mess. So tell me. Oh, and I, I think we have two different designs of flowers. So which, which one do you want to do first, the paper or the toothpick ones? Could be the paper okay so and so, it's a it's a message for for uh, for you michael oh really I, I should have had a personalized one for you i i, I just have a design I, I was in a bit of a rush and i actually outsourced it to my girlfriend to make the design <laughs> tell me to hear the message okay so so should we put them in water and let people see them bloom and show the message yes let me see here okay Can everyone watching, if you can't see from the angle that we've set up, let us know and we'll change the angles around so you can see things slightly better. And we see over the course of a minute or so, we have this beautiful flower blooming. Of course, kids are probably better at making things like really beautiful, but we see the flower blooming in the water. And the explanation of that is that the, uh, the cellulose fibers being hydrated, they're getting bigger and swelling and pushing against each other. So the paper no longer wants to fold up tighter and it's spreading out, uh, causing it to go flat. Uh, Ruth, do you agree with my explanation or do you have something you want to add to that? No, perfect. That's perfect. Excellent. And so flowers, I, we can say that flowers use water to move. They don't have muscles. So they use water to move. I think I would just add that. And so I've made a big flower because I want to say a very big thank you, Michael. So that's why mine is not open yet. So I can show you the messages. Thank you, Michael. Oh, that's for doing beautiful. This. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you can use different kinds of papers with color. They will bl blossom in different times. With kids, you also can use... Um, can use like uh, plastic and see that will not open and talk with kids about it. 
And yes, I bring another one. If you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. and I I wasn't sure you were going to bring it, so I I I think the same thing's set up. And I at your workshop, I don't think you showed this, but I watched no. your YouTube channel afterwards. Yeah. We and didn't so have, I, I got it from there. Yeah, we didn't have time in the workshop, but well, it's exactly the same thing. But instead of paper, we use how you call toothpicks. It's the name. Oh yeah, yeah, toothpicks. Yeah. So because I'm here, I don't have all the what I need, but I have here a spoon, a spoon with a little bit of water, and I'm going to put in the middle. And I'm using a pipette because I'm nerdy enough to have a pipette at home even when I'm isolated. <laughs> but, but actually, <laughs> in case anyone's interested, I also have a homemade pipette. Uh, maybe I should have used that instead, but I have it in the box next to me. And as we wait for the flowers to bloom, you'll see this is a pipette made from a drinking straw. And it's folded over and taped up so then it's just about the right amount to get a couple of drops of water. And you can see I can add, no, that didn't work. Not really good stuff for the homemade pipette. We'll try the pink one. <laughs> so now we have a star. And the principle is exactly the same. And it's, it's good we're doing it in unison because I don't think I packed mine tight enough and it's not swelling as much as it should. Yes. But I've focus on Ruth's camera because it, it, it works better uh, for her. <laughs> and does, does anyone have... Dry? Sorry, coming again? Are they dry? They, they were dry to start, yeah. Okay. But I, um, in a rush, trying to present, like trying to get things ready for synchronized experiments with a couple of people, foolishly, I didn't test them out ahead of time. And this is one of the things I think some sometimes work better than others. And it's, it's usually worth testing experiments out ahead of time. So everyone focus on roots because it worked better than mine. Uh, and it's, it's great we had uh, both of us doing it at the same time because then we double our chances of at least one working out. Yeah, I, I think just, it's al already open. Yeah, I think we'll not open more. Just if I put a little bit more of water. Yeah, that's it. You can make a challenge with it. It's like put this with your kids and say, you need to make a star without touching uh, with your fingers or nothing in the toothpicks and maybe they they remember they can put water <laughs> that's that's beautiful thank you and, and thank you for piloting the, the first synchronized experiments a anyone else uh feel free to let me or let us know what you think of synchronized experiments or if you have any uh any questions or feedback for root or i on this one while waiting to see if anyone wants to jump in and say things. I noticed Nasco's here uh, from Bulgaria. He's also got paper ones. So first we're gonna have Root. You wanted to mention the, the charcoal project, right? But you don't have things to repeat it, but you'll mention it. Then we'll go over to Nasco if Nasco's ready. Before that, does anyone have anything they wanna say? Okay, perfect. So I'll, I'll turn off my spotlight so we're fully on route now to, uh, to hear about one of your favorite experiments from the festival. And somehow you got muted. I, I don't know if that was me by mistake. Or... No, 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 it was me, it was me. Can I share my, my screen? Yes, yes, please do. Let me see it's here, I think. Okay, I'm not used to Zoom. Let me see where I have the things. So, okay. I want to say thank you. Oh, how this going on? Let me see. Sorry, having problems with this. <laughs> how this go, go out. 
because I have things here beside this and I cannot reach it. Oh, sorry. So I want to say thank you for Finland, okay, with the project of colors that you can you can extract from from nature so you can make a kind of watercolors with it and after that i was looking because they have a very nice experiment with a turmeric i think you call this is a spicy that we use in in food and so they use it and also they use something like alkaline like this like the the product we use to to clean the windows and the turmeric will change from yellow to red and this is a very nice one and i was uh, after this because i went i i really enjoy the the way how you can make a paper that indicates um alkalines and so i was look and i saw this for halloween is a, a a little bit strange but there there is a special paper that they don't sell anymore but we can do it with turmeric and you you have to boil and i have here the recipes that i i can share after this i will share in the in the chat all the links and so in spite of this i i, I look and i saw that we can use um turmeric in boiled water then you paint the paper wait a while and then you can spread your hands with alkaline and saying that this special um product will put your blood more near the surface of the skin and then you make like this splash and you'll see everything red is a little bit scary but the old kids they really really enjoyed this in in halloween so i think this is a, a great idea and so i i want to say thank you for for finland and i have here the um, the name of the authors but i cannot reach now i will put in the chat okay michael oh uh, yeah that's great thank you and uh, I, I, I'm eager to try that one out too now. So, uh, so thank you for sharing. Thank you. And uh, I'm just going to stop your screen from sharing now. Uh, there we go. And I'll switch the spotlight back over to me. And if Nasco's here, like I think he is, then I'm going to add you on as well. Uh, so then we can do some uh, some synchronized paper experiments. So, uh, Nazco, are are you here? I thought you said hi yes, in the chat. Yes, I am. Perfect. I just need to find where your screen is to spotlight you. Ah, there we go. There we go. Okay, so everyone should see Nazco as well as me now. <clears throat> uh, Let me just. Um, there is this sort of thing that covers stuff. I'm just going to. To take it away because uh, from time to time it blocks the the real view, right? Cool. So we're going to do the the paper, right? Let me just uh, yeah yeah see which oh. one you have. Uh... So the right. plan was so... I think for the first three, like in the order you showed the workshop. Yeah yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And... And I'd mentioned to everyone in the email if you want to follow along in this one, then yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what I was, uh, was wanting to say. So, if you want to tag along, now is the time to go to your bathroom <clears throat> and take three pieces of paper, toilet paper. And and while waiting for them to get back, I'm just going to briefly mention the story of how I met Nazco because it was a it was a funny but happy coincidence. So. As a lot of you saw, as I've mentioned before, I was wandering around the, the festival with my laptop on Zoom with a couple of teachers through the Experiment Share Network to show them around the festival. And there was one teacher from Albania. And I had met a kid from Albania the previous day who recognized me from when I biked through the country. He, he'd won a prize for um, like a smart pair of shoes, um, like a, a coding uh, STEM project. And so he said hi to me. And because there's a teacher from Albania, I was showing around the festival. Uh, there weren't that many people from Albania. So I wanted to find this kid. And I went back to where I thought his stand was, but it was Nazco's stand. Meanwhile, I've left my laptop with David Featenby, who may or may not join us later. 
uh, and Natalia from Ukraine. And they were chatting and I was frantically looking for this Albanian kid. And I go up to NASCA and I say, isn't this where there's the U Albanian kid? And of course, when I had the wrong stand, it made no sense to him whatsoever. <laughs> and he, he was quite friendly about it, even though me being in a rush and stressed out, I'm sure I was less polite than I should have been <laughs> trying to insist that he has an Albanian kid. And he eventually said, well, maybe if I visited Albania on holiday a decade ago, but uh, don't tell my wife. And uh, it was from that meeting. Then he said, but, but bring your Zoom session. I said, yeah, that'd be great. And I looked at his stand and I realized it was his stand. And I'd signed up for his session, his, his workshop that afternoon, because I was really eager to, uh, to see um, the, like his experiments. Because not only is there a bunch of ones on toilet paper, which I love, but he started doing uh, something very similar to my virtual science camp. So I was, like, I was very eager to meet him. And now I'd, I'd say, and you can disagree if you want, but I'd say we've become friends. And now I have plans to, to go to Bulgaria for your, uh, I keep forgetting what it's called, but like the Bulgarian oh, follow-up uh, festival. Session of songs or something. And, and so that hopefully bought enough time for everyone to get toilet paper. Please hold toilet paper up if you have it so we can see everyone who has toilet paper. Beautiful seeing a lot of people with toilet paper. And let's go. I've been talking a lot. Should I turn things over to you to lead this? Or do you want me to lead it and you judge how well I do it and you correct me when I get it wrong? Uh, whatever you please. Uh, you, you know them, so. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll start with ripping it. So everyone first take one sheet of toilet paper. And I want you to hold it uh, so that the perforation, like you see the perforation with the little dots where you ripped it, that's horizontal and take it ready to rip across the long smooth edge, edge. And on the count of three, we're gonna all try and rip it together. You're gonna try and rip it straight down just from pinching the top. So three, two, one, go. Hold it up oh, for us no. to see. What happened? It didn't work well. So it, it looked like and with no exception, we probably have toilet paper from like five or 10 different countries here. No one managed to rip it all the way clean through. So before we try and hypothesize what's going on or what we can learn from that, I want everyone to take another sheet and change the orientation so the perforations are at the top. Now with the perforations on the top, I want you to try the same thing. And three, two, one, and hold it up for us to see. I see a lot of beautiful pieces of toilet paper around the world with two even halves. So what's going on there? What, what's the difference between this orientation and this orientation? Uh, and, so, and someone's saying USA toilet paper is cheap. Can, can anyone make a hypothesis what the difference was between these situations? or? Why did this not work out? Come on, don't be shy. Even if you get it wrong, anyone just jump on your mic and shout something out. Paul, well, you're a weave. What's called a weave. All right. So it's like a thread. I know there's no thread in toilet mm. paper, but it's... Um, in the manufacture, there, there, there's, um, yeah, it's referred to as a weave. I, I don't know in other languages. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. orientation, the fibers, um, Adrian's saying there as well. Yeah, yeah. Cool. The, perfect. And that, that's, that's a great way of saying it. And thread, even though it's not thread, that's a great way to get people to picture what fibers look like because they're long and thread-like. So in the manufacture of toilet paper, and this is something I learned from Nasco the other day. So hopefully he'll jump on and make my explanation even better because it's not going to be perfect the first time around. But when, when they manufacture it, they grind up the wood pulp and they, is it, they press it or they extrude it? They extrude it through um, big rollers that are made out of steel. So the steel uh, goes that way and the pulp gets extruded through that. So when the roller squeeze the paper the fibers don't have a lot of choice they align with each other 
And uh, then this is rolled on the toilet paper roll, of course, and it is perforated in the same time. So the fibers are, uh, the sheets are perforated, not along the fibers, but across them. So I had this nice big piece of roll where the fibers go along the um, long part. And of course, then they, this great uh, toilet uh, paper roll, they cut it in smaller pieces. And it is easier that way because they cut it along the lines. They cut it um, uh, right between the threads. So this is why this edge is so perfect because the rolled, already rolled uh, paper roll, it is quite wide and they just cut it in slices, which is one paper roll roll wide. And it is quite easy to do with a big machine because you're not cutting anything, you're just dividing the threads. I hope that made sense though. To me, it makes perfect sense, but anyone feel free to jump on if you have any questions. And we'll move on to one other experiment to show the strength of the fibers that way. So take another sheet of toilet paper and I want you to fold it up without twisting it. It's no twisting involved. And just fold it up with the compact, like a squished up piece. So it's Don't like a, like a long make line. A good edge. Just fold it so it's easy for you to hold on to it. All right. You don't need really nice crisp pages. Okay, when, when you have it ready, hold it up in front of the camera so we can see a bunch of people ready. Uh, I'm losing Michael a bit. What about you? Put your hands like that if you're losing Michael, but you're seeing me, all right? Yes, I think Michael has frozen. Yeah, all right. Well, um, let's continue with that, Michael. I'm sure he will uh, get back to us sooner or later. So we have a toilet piece, piece, a toilet uh, paper piece, and we have just slightly crushed it. So now we hold it between our thumb and forefinger in both hands, and Hold it like that and try to squeeze it out in the uh, to the sides. So three, two, one, go! And of course, it crushes easy peasy, right? Uh, although the edges look quite jagged. Okay, so now let's take another one and do it uh, somehow differently. So we are going to take fresh one. Uh, we already did the first half, Michael? Uh, uh, yes, and, and sorry, I had internet connection problems, so I, I've hopefully fixed that, but great fine. reason there's two of us here. So. <laughs> we are already at that sort of uh, thing, so you can tell them uh, how to proceed. So we already have that, okay? Ah, perfect. So say, same orientation, and say, same orientation, yeah. Same orientation, yeah. but now when you fold it up, also twist it around. And I want you to twist it as tight as you can go. So keep twisting. And twist until it sort of like starts balling up on itself. And you want it to be straight. So if you can't twist more without it being in like a twisted knotting thing, then stop twisting, but you want it like the maximum twist twisting that it'll still be straight-ish. So once you have it twisted like that, hold it up so we can all see your toilet paper held up straight. Looks like most people are done twisting. So we'll do another countdown and we'll try and pull it apart. Three, two, one. Oh, this is quite stronger paper that I have in Prague. <laughs> I, 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 I finally got mine. And this is like the, the cheapest brand of toilet paper uh, oh. that you get in France. So, so it is possible to rip it, 
but it looked looking at your cameras like like most of you struggled a lot more to rip it apart that way so it's still the same fibers the only thing we've changed is we've twisted around but when we have it twisted around then the twisting action squeezes the fibers together and then the fibers are held tightly on each other so that they can't slip as much against each other and uh so then we're not when we rip it apart it's less easy to have one fiber slip off of another and it's more um hmm, getting lost in the explanation but more, more like there's more friction between the fibers so they're not as easy to pull apart and and are we pulling the fibers apart still or in some cases do we need to actually rip some of the fibers apart to have a clean well, tear. when we have a twist uh, we have some of them swirled about so yes we are pushing against that also mm. and so so we see it's much stronger that way and and i think uh yeah we'll we'll very quickly show one last one with toilet paper and then we'll get to more ones because we, we could spend an hour doing this because your, your workshop was it was a beautiful hour on toilet paper and just one last one because this was one that I'd seen this effect before, but I would never thought of the reasoning why. And it's such like a, a beautiful and sensical reasoning when you think of it. And, and so here. So uh, you may not have the, the things because here we have some oil. So we are going to just show you that one because it's quite nasty and dirty and oily. So we are going to keep you away from that. And so what, what we're going to do is we're each going to take a drop of oil and notice I have, yeah, I'll use this sheet of uh, toilet paper. So let's first show them how the toilet paper looks like while yes. put on something. So and, and my something is flat on the table, so I, I can move the camera, but you can see you can't very well see what's beneath it. And my is not really see through either. So let's proceed and put just a little bit of oil on a random spot on the toilet paper. And now what happened? You can clearly see through the toilet paper, although my light here is not really nice, I'm sure you can see some letters and you can see beautiful French flag over there with Michael. And, and the new thing for me with this, because I, I'd been familiar with grease spots on paper, making them transparent. And a grease spot photometer is a, is a really cool optics experiment, just a simple material to compare brightness of light sources. But I never thought of it as happening because cellulose, which paper is made of, and oil have a very similar index of refraction. So it's just like the disappearing beaker, or disappearing glass trick, when you put glass inside of oil or glycerin, because they have a similar index of refraction. But toilet paper, or most papers appear white because light is scattered in all directions from the white uh, fibers. Whereas uh, if you get oil in between them, then we're no longer having light passing from air to cellulose to air to cellulose to air to cellulose to scatter light in a white way. But we're having a, like a more, not a solid sheet, but like a continuous uh, layer of index of refraction of about 1.5. Um, and so it's passing through and it's fairly transparent. So that was a beautiful new thing that I learned. Um, I think I've done enough talking for now. So now I'm gonna turn things fully over to Nazco and you're gonna be sharing, I forget which experiment you were gonna be sharing that you saw from someone. Oh yeah, with uh, lemon in, right? Sorry, the lemon in, yeah. Yeah, so, so rather than me talking more now, You'll be the only one talking for for the next minute or two. Well, however long it takes. But, right. uh, thank you again. Oh, it's a pleasure and pleasure. All right. So um, what I saw on Sons was something that I 
I know of, but I haven't uh, really done it uh, until then. And I saw it in, in person. It, it was quite a lot more interesting than I anticipated. And it was um, a joint project uh, from Spain and Italy about Limonen and its properties. So they were showing um, stuff with Limonen and how to extract Limonen and what Limonen is used for and how the native um, tribes in the Neolithic time in those places and after that were using Limonen in their day-to-day -day life. And the experiment that I really, really appreciated was um, how Limonen and uh, latex react. Of course, um, oh, it happens cool. so that I have a lot of things to do in, in school, even though it's a vacation. So I have a bit of a smudge pot of, um, of material. So I don't really have a balloon. Like a nerd, I have glove, which is of course made of latex. So we should be set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inflate the glove. And of course, inflating the glove is a really nice thing to do with, uh, with the students because all of them really think that this is uh, Chaos Uterus, so uh, others. So it's, uh, it's always fun. Ah, it's cow other. Uh, let, let me squeeze it. Let, let's fill it with water on milk or, and squeeze it in our faces and so on and so forth. Of course. And now uh, we have the latex on the tension. So if I just put my finger inside, well, it will just give way. But what will happen if I take a citrus, citrus fruit and I gently squeeze as much as I can from the oil on the tip of my finger. So I'm squeezing, making a nice big blob of the stuff. And now I'm going to try to push it through and it pops. Why does it pop? Well, because uh, you can see how it pop as if I pushed it with a needle. And actually here, there is something strange on the glove. Where the limonade fell, there is uh, a bulb. There is um, uh, like when you burn yourself and you got blisters. So there's blisters on the latex. Well, why? Well, of course, the explanation is quite simple. There, the limonen is really, really good in dissolving polymers that have bisulfite bridges. And latex being a natural polymer, it's held together by bisulfate bridges. And those bisulfate bridges are really, really easy to break apart with limonen. And this is what we're showing here. And of course, the, the bonus is that you have a tiny glob of uh, oil from citrus that you put pressure on a balloon and it pops. And of course, it brings and those droplets of citrus oil everywhere. So after the balloon pops, everything smells of citrus right in your face. It, it's really, really nice and cool experiment. And I really like it and I'm going to abuse showing it to my children because uh, we are learning about latex and this is quite quite good segue on what polymers are good and not good for. So this is from me and I'm eager to see what you have in stock. You're muted, Michael. I was muted, sorry. So I, I said, excellent, thank you. Uh, and if, if we follow along the schedule, uh, the next two I've had on the schedule, I haven't heard back from them if they actually intend to present something. So Jan de Fatima in Brazil, uh, if you do have something to present. Uh, so she's joining us from Brazil and she had seen some of the festival, again, from me showing people around via Zoom and going to stands. So. She had signed up to share something, but hasn't gotten back to me when I asked. If not, then Tanya in Serbia is ready to go. So 
Let's give it a couple more seconds to hear if Janda Fatima does reply. If not, then we'll go to Tanya, uh, who's joining from New Belgrade. Hi. Okay, let's uh, let's yeah, add you on the spotlight so people should be able to see you and I right now. And thank you. And, and can I turn things over to you to introduce yourself for like 30 seconds? Because I've been frantically looking for my magnets, which I set aside before we started, and I don't know where I put them. So this is Tanya. Tanya, please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Tanya from Serbia. I am primary teacher. And I was a um, uh, de delegate from Serbia on Science on Stage Festival. Uh, I am Science on Stage Ambassador in Serbia and uh, Scientist Ambassador too. I am coordinator for Mensa for Kids in Serbia. Absolutely. And I like uh, to organize uh, workshops for children. Uh, I have here something. And I, I have a similar version of that, I think. Yes, in the yeah. uh, I have a glass of water with uh, objects from plastic uh, uh, or metal or ceramic. Oh, this and... one is supposed to be a glass of water, not a glass of uh, garbage. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be back in just a second. It can be garbage too. But in my my experiment for my um, project, uh, magical uh, the magical world of magnets, I had the one of uh, of uh, experiments who. where we must to, uh, to see how uh, magnet power uh, doing uh, through water and glass. Do you ready? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready. Yes, I, I have very strong magnets. And well, I, have, I have very strong magnets that I keep in a test tube in case I get them near iron filings or hematite or anything. Maybe to get some other, and we, uh, here, plastic and uh, ceramic stay on bottom of, of, of glass, and uh, all the metal go up, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I must have clean my, my laptop. <laughs> Here, here we have, uh, with this experiment, we show to children how, how recyc a recycling process uh, can, can be organized, uh, like in cars. Uh, problem is uh, uh, only um, some metals are, uh, uh, are not uh, uh, pulled out with magnets because they don't, um, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, uh, they don't um, react on magnets. Like some coins, we can, uh, some coins we can uh, attract with the magnets, but some coins we, we can't. Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, for, from what, what, what uh, metal they are made because uh, something uh, more is the problem with recycling, with cleaning clean uh, metals or, or no, what metal. Here we have all metal objects going up. I would like to show some uh, toys which made my students for this project. And uh, for this this uh, this festival, this is to show magnetic power. We have one stick with magnets. We have some cartoon with uh, some elements 
here is a solar system and we have little rocket with paper clips. Then we can put our rocket and take this. And we can pull. We can write uh, our, move our rocket where we want to go. Uh, um, uh. Like this, we can more uh, more uh, games, uh, mostly with the same system. This is little b must go through the labyrinth. I'm sorry, just a minute. Mm. My whole project is. Um, uh, with experiment through through workstation. This is little b, which going to labyrinth. Then we have fisherman, the old game which most children know. With the here is a. Uh, Ecology team uh, that uh, my fishermen, uh, fishermen uh, can't uh, fish uh, garbage or treasure. Only he must uh, catch the fish. And it is for now. I uh, saw many uh, new, um, many new, uh, many new uh, experiment and uh, meet many new um, uh, colleagues who uh, show me um, uh, new ideas. And I am uh, very pleased because of that. I would like to show you one experiment from stand uh, with Leonardo uh, experiments there I saw that. I think that is uh, from Czech Republic, uh, some. I would like to share. Uh, do you see now? It is video. Oh, uh, yeah, we can see it well. Yeah, yeah. Yes. There are. This is very sympathetic and very, very easy and a very magic experiment for, for ch young children with the, uh, <coughs> I work with. This is something like that. And uh, stop share. Then it, you said and, short. And that <laughs> And that, that reminds me of uh, the one NASCO and I showed with the, the oil drop, uh, because we can see right through those balls because they must have the same index of refraction of the liquid. Yes. And I'm, yes. I'm guessing they're either glass beads and that's glycerin, or it could be, I forget what they call the water beads. Maybe someone could jump in and say, but was it or water they were using? Beads or those, it seems. They are made from sodium polyacrylate. Yes, I think ah. that is. And they're, when puffed up, they're about 99 something percent water. So they have the same refractive index as water. They are sometimes called aqua beads, but there are and many also, names for them. Yeah, like jelly marbles also. I yes. Saw. Mm. They, they are very common uh, in, in our store. And I saw something like that uh, earlier, but uh, it is uh, refresh my, my memories and I would like to show my, my students very soon. <laughs> and it is all, this is all. Oh, beautiful, thank you. And, and as you'll notice, I've been taking notes because that's uh, something now I want to uh, try and seek out and buy. And uh, so sodium polyacrylate is probably a good lead in to the next uh, person who's going to jump on for a synchronized experiment with me, because Adrian, if I'm not mistaken, does a number of, ex well, at least one experiment I saw on stage with sodium polyacrylate. 
um, although it's not one that we planned for today. Um, Adrian, are you ready to jump on for a synchronized magic trick with me? Sure, let's go for it. Excellent. And uh, uh, okay, so now you should see Adrian and I, and I'm going to call for an assistant to come from the other room. Sarah, tu peux venir pour le tournée de magie? And, and this one is using a, a gift that Adrian gave me at the end of the festival uh, so that I'm able to do it without needing to source it myself uh, for the first time trying it. Adrian, do you want to introduce the trick as I get it set up and on camera sure. here? So I'll put my screen down so you should be able to see two coins. One's a 10 pence coin and one's a, um, a two pence coin. So one's made out of nickel and the other is made out of copper. Have you got a similar setup there, Michael? Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm using Czech coins in the uh, theme of the festival. Sure. So one's a 15 uh, crown piece and one's a 20 crown piece. And okay, so have you got your partner there? Uh, she came and then she left. To, to the end? <laughs> uh, so she's just getting a second laptop so that she can see you at the same time that she's, uh, she's doing it with us. Okay, so my, my wonderful assistant. Hi. Uh, Hi there. Magic trick. Okay, so... What do we need her to do now? We need uh, her to choose a coin. Point, point to a coin. There's this point. That one? Okay. So you chose that one. I'll take this one away. Okay. And I'll take my one away too. Okay. And then what I'd like you to do is put your finger firmly in the coin like this and push firmly down and watch what happens. So push hard. Keep pushing. <laughs> and you can examine the latex there's no hole in the latex and the coin has definitely passed through into the glass so you pushed it all the way through oh, we definitely... <laughs> magic exactly but how did it happen i don't know <laughs> And, and Adrian, do, do we want to do a reveal? Sure, yeah. Okay, so the his, there's a his, bit of history behind this. This trick's over 50 years old, and it was invented by a Czechoslovakian that was working in a chemical factory. And he was playing along, along with a latex glove, and he found out two interesting things about the properties of latex. One is that it's like a balloon. When you have a balloon that is not inflated, it's a peak and not particularly see-through. However, when you stretch latex very tightly, it becomes thinner and more light can pass through it. And this and also becomes a little bit more adhesive too. So I'll try and show you the setup, how to do this. If I go back down to my screen. So I need a cork or a, a rubber bung for this. And it's good to have a coin that's got some kind of grip around the edge too. So my setup I do for this, is I stretch the latex until it almost breaks, until it comes see-through, and then I press it on top of the coin like this. It usually takes a couple of goes or so. How are you getting on there, Michael? I'm, I'm this is third, third time lucky, I need to pull this really tight. So I've pressed firmly on this. This looks a bit more promising. I was, I was surprised when I was testing it out uh, when I got back to Paris. I was there afraid to stretch it as far as you needed to. Yeah. And I thought so, I was going to break it. So there we go. That coin looks as if it's on top of the rubber, but is actually underneath, being gripped underneath. Okay, so it, it, it's transparent. The, the, even though it looks deceptive here, the latex is on top of the coin. It's actually underneath. And then what I do is then I place it on top of the glass and I hold it in place with an elastic band like this. It's best to do it with a glass if possible. I've done it in a plastic cup, but you don't get that sound of the coin passing through so well if you do it in a disposable cup. I, I do it with a beaker in my class as well. So that's, that's the setup here. And then to make it even more deceptive, I'll put um, the other coin, because latex is stretchy, you can actually stretch it so you can put it underneath like this. So it really looks as if the coin is not only on top of the rubber, but on top of another coin. And then when I get do the trick, um, 
you get them to choose a coin. It really doesn't matter which one they choose. If they choose the copper coin, you give them the copper coin and you say, right, we're going to do something amazing with a nickel coin. However, if they choose the nickel coin, I say, right, we'll do something amazing with the coin you're choosing. And then it's just a case of presentation. And the good thing is you don't have to, you, you get them to do it. The astonishing moment happens to them. And then when you press it through, as you can see like this, you get that moment of sort of usually stunned silence and this really nice illusion of the coin passing through the latex. That's beautiful. Uh, thank you for teaching me that one, Adrian. And thank you, Sarah, for joining <laughs> that experiment. The description for this, I should say, is in Paul's 2019 Science and Stage Resource, sorry, not Paul's, the Science, Science Stage Ireland's Guide for 2019. It's performed by, I think, Mary Duffy, I think, is, does a video performance of it as well, if you go to the Science and Stage Ireland's website, if you want to find out the details of how to do it. And I'll, I'll look up uh, the direct link to that, too, and add that to the, the schedule, so anyone who wants to, like, look back and get to the, the ones they see. Another thing I'm sure some people are going to be asking, because I'm wondering myself, do you have any recommendations for where we can buy the, the latex? Like you said, dental dentist. Yep, uh, uh, you, yep you can get uh, it from your dentist. Buyers that are like the cheapest one. Okay, so in, in France, people don't go to the dentist unless they have problems. So I'll need to look up my dentist and go find okay. them again. Or this is a, you can get, they're called latex dental dams. So you can buy them from um, an internet dental supplier if you look hard enough. So these are basically, they come, you can buy, they're, they're a better value. You can buy them from magic shops. You know, you can buy the coin through rubber, but you might get two or one or two or sheets maybe for three to five euros. But if you buy bulk buy them, this will cost about 10 or 20 euros, maybe from a supplier. You can get quite a few sheets. Um, and I got mine from a place called Mr. Dental, I think it's called in the UK, but there's probably one in your country that will supply these to dentists in your country. So ask somebody you know that's a dentist or Google maybe um, for supplies. Um, somebody asked me if you can use latex gloves or normal balloons. I've tried it with normal balloons from shops and latex gloves, but it, it, it's either too thick or it doesn't grip. Um, or you can't cut it to the right shape. It's, it, those latex dams are the best that I've found so far for the purpose. That's, that's beautiful. Thank you. And and you have uh, an experiment with from a thermal chromic ink uh, that you saw from a stand in Switzerland to share as well. Yeah, sure. I, I went to a workshop uh, hosted by a Swiss lady called Mari Pashtova. The the workshop was called Everyday Phenomena in Chemistry. And her final thing she talked about was a story about when she was marking student papers for a test or exam, she had a hot cup of coffee and she noticed the writing started to disappear. And it turned out they'd done their, some students had done their exams using friction pens. So these are ink pens that you can rub out the ink and they're basically a temperature sensitive. They appear, you know, when you, uh, upon heat, the ink tends to disappear. So I can show you a sort of magic trick that I use based on this, and then I'll give you a description of how it works. So uh, basically, well, I'll, I'll give you a description of how it works first uh, just before, so I can, Michael can get back. So I've got a post-it note here, and if I write, let's say the word magic on this bit of post-it note, I don't know if you can see that, okay, there's a, there's a bit of a glare there. We can see it there, yeah, at first yeah. the glare is a bit strong. Yeah. And then if you take a match, and I try and see if I can get the magic to go there. And I put heat behind it. You can see that the ink starts to disappear over here. And she was told a story that um, if you put it back into the freezer or a fridge, it's reversible. You can get that ink to come back. And she did a little demonstration of a secret message in which you could have a cryogenic spray. She, she wrote the message heated it up to disappear and had a cryogenic spray, you know, a really cold sort of spray to try and get the message back and reveal a secret message. So it could be, you know, you could have a spy scenario where you're passing a secret message, like an invisible ink using the pen. But I'd like to show you a magic trick that I've done on a similar kind of principle. And it involves a little prediction, which I'm going to have here. Okay, so this is my mystery prediction with a question mark on it. And Michael, I'm gonna ask you to look at my screen Okay, and I want you to say stop at any moment and to choose a card. Uh, stop. Hard. Okay, happy with this card? 
Uh, well, there was a delay. I wanted it earlier, but I'm happy enough with that one. Oh, okay. For speed, we'll just go for this one. Okay. Yeah. So the, the card you chose was the Eight of Diamonds. I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, yep, you're coming through clear, yes. Okay. Now, let's see if my prediction was right, okay? Is, your eight, is there an Eight and a Diamond in the back? Uh, well, it is. You can see. Um, the, the students, for some reason, are not particularly impressed by this. You know, you can see there's an Eight <laughs> and a Diamond on there. Um, that, that doesn't really get a round of applause too much from the students. So I have to say, well, you know... Mag uh, fire is a very thing. Fire is very much associated with magic, so maybe if we can use a flame, we can get something to, that's a bit more impressive. If I do this, so if I pass a little bit of fire behind it and get the post-it note to get a little bit hotter, you can see that all the cards disappear apart from your selected card, which was the eight of diamonds. <laughs> so you, so how is it done? Well, basically, this is done, the eight of diamonds is done in real ink normal non-thermochromic ink and the rest of the shapes were done using a friction pen and those that have seen me before and I actually used this went wrong in the workshop I used the wrong pack but this was a pack I was meant to use in the workshop all these are eights of diamonds you can see present there so there was, there was a kind of magician's choice as it were you'd only one choice to choose the eight of diamonds so it was a nice little demonstration you can do with the ink there's one more thing for the physicists that um, I like I saw once um, is that you can put a sheet of thermochromic ink, sorry, not this one, and cover it with thermochromic ink and put it in a microwave. Now physicists will be aware of an experiment where you can use a microwave to determine the speed of light. I've seen it done with chocolate, marshmallows, and butter, bread and butter, but I tend not to have those in the lab. But normally most schools will have a microwave somewhere in their school. And what you can do is you can, if you leave a thermochromic, I did this this afternoon, if you leave a thermochromic ink in the microwave, you get spots like this. Um, so I've got one here, I'm trying to do this back, where's it go? Uh, one here, another one here, another one here. And basically you can get take an average of, it's about 15 centimeters between the spots. And you can use this to determine the wavelength of the microwave radiation. And if you look at the back of your microwave, you can get the frequency and you can use this equation. Okay, speed equals frequency times wavelength. And if I turn this around, okay, this, my microwave at the back is 2,450 megahertz in the back. So we have to convert that to hertz, make it 10 to, 10, 10 to the six. It's 15 centimeters, the wavelength I got on my sheet. So I have to convert that to meters, 0.15. And you can get not too far off the speed of light, 3.7 times 10 to the eight is what I got today. So there's quite nice applications you can use with thermochromic, I think, uh, for magic effects and secret writing and, um, you know, some good chemistry and physics in there too. Can I say something? Yeah. Thank you, Adrian. That's amazing. <laughs> I always do that with cheese and chocolate. Yeah. I never saw with that idea. That's amazing. Yeah. Because I always do that with the microwave, but yeah. I never try with uh, the, with that. Yeah, I, I, it, it was came from somebody called Declan Fleming who wrote an article in a journal so called good. Education and Chemistry. And I don't like the mess of the bread and butter and chocolate and marshmallows. And I, I never have yeah. them in the school anyway, but you just need one of these in your class. So you can do yeah. quite a lot so of nice. nice chemistry and physics. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that, that's beautiful, thank you. And any other uh, feedback or questions for Adrian? And, and what, one thing I thought of, um, I just found a fact, well, heard a fact the other day, and I haven't fact-checked it to, to check for sure, but often as teachers will say, the frequency of your microwave is chosen because it's a resonant frequency for a bond in water molecules. And I found out the other day, apparently, and again, I haven't fact-checked this, so this could be wrong, but apparently that's completely made up. And that the frequency just can give either rotational or translational motion to any molecules in the substance. And it's chosen because that was the, uh, either the lowest or highest frequency that was outside of the broadcast range. Uh, and it was chosen that way. So if anyone can either confirm or deny that fact, please let me know, but that like, that's something that I'm thinking of checking. And interesting thing, when Adrian mentioned he was gonna show something on thermochromic inks, it reminded me of the first video I made during the first uh, COVID lockdown, and it was explaining the chemistry of it. And when cleaning things today, I found the, the like cutouts I made two years ago showing the dye that was inactive or inactive for when it's colored. So when you heat it up, it becomes inactive. When you cool it down, 
uh, becomes collared with the developer, which is like a thermodependent pH reaction. And the dyes are usually a special case of a pH indicator. So there's, there's interesting chemistry that if you want to look it up, it might take hours because most of the pen manufacturers say, oh, it's a trade secret. We can't say how it works. Um, but there's always ways to look up some of the science behind how it works. Uh, so it's, it's really great to see that. But Paul made a good point as well. Make sure you take the turntable out and doing an upturned dish um, as well. You're more likely, otherwise you, you won't get these little spots on the paper. And are, are there any other tips uh, from people who've done this before or any other questions people have before we move on to another experiment? Normally I use this. <laughs> 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 Funnily enough, I don't have them, Ruta. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have a funny, a funny story. Um, in Christmas time, we give, we have a secret friend in school, and so in the end, I want to reveal that it, I was the secret friend, and so I give a paper like with this kind of pens, and then I give this for to reveal, and the lady thought that this was for her the present, and I said, no, 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 it's just to reveal the message. So it's it's uh, it's easy and we don't need matches for that. <laughs> and 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 an, another variation using friction pens is if you heat up the friction pen itself. Like of course, don't don't do it with a match. Like I do it in a pot of boiling or like hot water. Then you have invisible ink where you can write with it. And then to develop it, you need to put it in a freezer or yeah. like use something very cold. So kids sometimes have fun if they have like their own invisible ink pen that develops that way. Any other thoughts or tips before we go to the last uh, couple experiments? Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, Nasco, you seem to have your hand up. Well, when you have uh, thermochromic pens, uh, because in Bulgaria <clears throat> in Christmas time we write charms on paper and put it um, in, in dough and then make bread. Well, don't use that pens for that because then you're without charm. <laughs> so a good way you could accidentally uh, discover that it disappears with heat. And uh, similar to Adrian's story with the coffee cup, I had a colleague in France who had had, a, I think it was in a car that got hot in the heat. Uh, it didn't need to be quite hot because I think it's usually about like high 40s or even into the 50s temperature. Uh, but they had a bunch of exams where like one or two of the students had gone blank. Uh, and they were quite worried about that until uh, one of their colleagues said, oh, just put them in the freezer. It'll be fine. <coughs> OK, so so for the, the next experiment, I'm going to call on astronauts in Greece. And what we did during the festival when, when you guys weren't looking we made a pair of quantum entangled pendulum. Uh, Astronauts, do you have your uh, quantum entangled uh, pendulum to uh, pull up with me? Yes, yes, I think. I... Perfect. And so what, what we did with these was they're entangled. So the state of one will affect the state of the other. So if we look at them, I should, by, uh, by looking at Astronauts' pendulum, well, or his noticing mine through a distance, and it's about 2,000 kilometers between Paris and Crete. I, I should know I bike most of it. And we should see one of them should start moving, and it should be the same on both of them. And astronauts, I, this, this is harder than I thought. Is it? Can someone other than the two experimenters confirm? Is it the same uh, part of the pendulum that's moving for both of us? I'm not sure, Michael. I think it's the longest one for both of you. And this, this, this isn't a wild success, but it's, it's worth a try. Um, do, do it, uh, for those of you who missed either Astrino sharing this uh, or similar to this at the November experiment share or me sharing this on stage, Astrino, do you want to explain what's going on here? They're, they're not actually quantum entangled. Yes, we're actually focused on uh, uh, 
uh, one of uh, the pen, uh, pendulums. So there is an uh, eye to hand coordination and uh, uh, by moving uh, this uh, road slightly back and forth, we managed to uh, move only one of uh, this. For example, if I keep an eye on uh, the orange ball, I can only move the orange ball. If I keep an eye on the green one, But of, of course, uh, and quantum uh, entanglement is a different thing. <laughs> Shall we keep doing it? Uh, I, I, I think people have gotten the point. Does, does anyone need to see it more? I, I think we're good. And it was, uh, I, mine didn't work as well as I liked, but it was really good giving a try on that. Uh, thank you, Astrino. And for those of you who, who don't know uh, yet, like if you weren't here on earlier experiment shares, the first monthly experiment share I had was actually live from Astrinos' lab uh, in Crete. And I had looked him up as a science on stage ambassador. I had just recently been accepted onto the French team. And I was biking to Greece and I said, uh, you seem like a good contact person for Greece. Do you know of any eager, eager educators I can get in touch with? And not only did he put me in touch with people to meet, like for education there, he gave me advice on the whole country, even put me in touch with uh, a monk at a monastery where I stayed with. And just a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful person to know and like excellent contact person. Um, so it's, it's no wonder he was chosen as Science on Stage Ambassador for Greece, because at least from my experience, all you need to do is ask him, do you know who I can meet in your country? And then you'll have a friend, a place to stay, and interesting people to see all the way along. Uh, so it's always a great pleasure to, to see you again, Astrinos. Uh, thank you again. Yes. Uh, you, you forgot to mention that I was the worst of uh, the people uh, you actually <laughs> met here. <laughs> I, I oh, really? the worst hospitality. You had to stay in my lab. and uh, But next time, I will make it uh, oh, I. I I, I loved the lab. I, I, the, the only thing I didn't like so much was the warning after I'd been there a day or two that you said, oh, you shouldn't let anything touch the floor there. <laughs> and that, that would have been a good thing to notice, like once when I, uh, right when I arrived, rather than once I packed things all over that part of the floor. But, but uh, I have, I will show you. Can you see over there? There's a, a chair that turns into a bed waiting for you. Okay, so I, I do need to hurry up and get back to uh, get back to Crete. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. And and now now we'll be leaving uh, Crete and we'll be finishing off this experiment share with probably two uh, quick magic tricks uh, with Paul in Ireland. Uh, are you still up for that, Paul? Yeah, no problem. Are we synchronizing these? We're going to attempt to synchronize them. Yes. Oh, and to, to mention just before I unspotlight Astrinos, uh, Paul and Astrinos joined me uh, live when I was in Ghana a month ago to show a bunch of magic tricks to, to students there. And that was a really great, uh, great experience. I'm going to try and do more things like that. Uh, the kids there loved it, and they're going to repeat it at an upcoming Yes International meeting, which for those who don't know yet, is like a student version of uh, these experiment share meetings. Um, so they both shared magic together with me uh, a number of times before, and I'm really glad to finish off with these two. Um, so, Paul, uh, I have stuff for the pencils in the bottle, uh, for the paperclip elevator, and if you want to do the catalyst as well, I actually have the, the one you gave me in Prague. There you go. Let's, let, let's maybe start with that because uh, Adrian is still here, and this is something that myself and Adrian did um, as part of a magic workshop during Science on Stage. There are on stage presentations, but there, as you've already heard, there's uh, some workshops where people really get to show 
each other. But the main part of science on stage is the fair. Okay, that's where people have tables. So, Michael, are we? What are we doing first? Is it the paper catalyst? Uh, yeah, let's start with the paper catalyst. Okay, all right. So let me just um, start it. So um, you can see I've, I've got two paper clips. And the question for everybody here on the call is, uh, what's the probability of throwing those paper clips up in the air and them landing linked together? Well, hopefully you're, you're thinking uh, the chances of throwing them up and them falling back down linked is quite small. And another way of asking the question is, uh, how many times would you have to throw them up in the air for them to come back linked? But this is something that you, you can try. And if you've got your paper clips and a bank note or some paper, what I've got is I, I've got a piece of paper. OK, it's just um, ordinary. A4 paper, okay? And when um, Adrian and myself did this during the webinar, we had about 50 people doing it simultaneously. So it's in this shape, it's folded twice, okay? Into, um, as I'm looking at it, uh, an S shape or an inverted um, Z. So hopefully you will, will see, okay, that I'm putting one paper clip on the front and in the middle, okay, like so, okay, 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 let me just adjust it slightly, okay, and then the second paper clip goes on my side and in the middle. So, just to repeat that. There are three layers, this front, center, and rear. And this paper clip is connecting the front and the center. And the yellow paper clip is connecting the rear and the center. OK, so Michael, are we going to do this on the count of three? Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. OK, so three. Two, two, one. Okay. How, how did you get on there, Michael? I, I failed. Ah, uh, okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. It only takes about 200 times practice. No, it should join together. And what you're left with is your piece of paper that is intact. Because this has acted like a catalyst. It has reduced the energy involved with throwing those paper clips up millions and millions of times. And it is also still intact because catalysts are not used up in, in the reaction. And our bodies are full of catalysts. We call them enzymes. So um, your students can experiment with this. Um, they can also put, when they're joining them up, put elastic bands in between the paper clips and the elastic bands will also interlink with the paper clips. So they can produce long chains of um, linked paper clips and elastic bands. And this may be an, introdu an introduction into polymers. But um, yeah, this is the, the catalyst paper clip experiment with a piece of paper. OK, Michael, didn't work for you. You must have them in the wrong order. So, yeah, and no, I'm going to play around with this more after the Zoom. Okay, <laughs> it, so, it usually works for me. Like this, this isn't the first time I've done it. I, yeah, yeah, you did it in Ghana perfectly. If you overthink it, like most things, it can uh, revolt against you. That's what I find. Okay, so uh, are we going to the next paperclip experiment? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, nice one, uh, Adrian. Um, <laughs> Adrian has said Michael's catalyst was denat denatured. <laughs> okay, okay, right. Okay, so what we've got here is an elastic band. And if you snap the elastic band, so you've got a piece of elastic, okay, and use the paper clip, or you can use a wedding ring, if you have a wedding ring, or anything really with a hole in it. So you 
feed the elastic band through the paper clip. Okay, and the paper clip is free to swing up and down. Now, hopefully, some of you have heard of something called telekinesis, which is movement um, of things just with the power of the mind. I'll just move back a little bit so hopefully you'll be able to see. Okay, so my hands are not going to move. I'm going to assure you that my hands are not going to move. And with the power of our thought, and anybody else who's on the call with a paper clip and elastic band is welcome to try this as well. We're going to make the elastic band climb up the. We're going to make the paper clip climb up the elastic band. Okay, I think you can see some movement. So this is called the elastic elevator. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do that just a little bit quicker for you. Okay, so let's try it again. And uh, Michael, you did this as well, I think, in, in, in Ghana. And I think the major problem was, was finding paper clips in Ghana. Is that right? Uh, I I think we, I'm trying to remember, we, we had elastic bands. So we, yeah, we ended up doing it with one elastic band on the other. Like, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Which, is, you know, that's not too hard it, to do. It but, can be done too, yeah. Anything with a hole. But I, I, I'm trying to remember because we had paper clips for the, pa the paper clip catalyst. The, there were a number of other surprising things that we couldn't find, but we must have had paper clips because we were doing the paper clip catalyst. Okay, I'm going to reveal this because um, hopefully there's there's a couple of people who are wondering how it's how it's done because uh, if there isn't, well, <laughs> there's not much point doing it. So actually, it is a trick. Okay, but um, you can get a lot of science out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you really this hand down here, the lower hand, because this is where all the action takes place. Okay. So what's happening is I'm letting the elastic band slip between my fingers and the elastic band is moving. So really the paper clip does not move relative to the elastic band. It's the elastic band that's moving like an elevator. Okay. So you might say, oh, okay, right. So much, so much for that. It's a trick. But what way can we use this in science and in science teaching? I can ask you a couple of questions, a couple of questions that I ask my students. Will the elastic band go all the way to the top? Um, if it doesn't go all the way to the top, how far will it go? Will it go halfway? Two thirds? What does it depend on? Okay, well, I think some of you will know that it depends on how much elastic I've got down here. Is there a critical angle that the elastic or that the uh, paper clip won't climb up? And there is. Um, believe me when I tell you that you can get a 40 minute lesson of higher end physics from this equipment. You can do free body exam, uh, free body diagrams. You can talk about elasticity friction, resolving vectors, components acting vertically and horizontally. And also you can um, give your students a little trick that they can go home and show their parents. And anytime you get students talking about science and magic, I think you're on a winner. Okay, was that okay? Did that one work for you, Michael? Yeah, 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 that, that, that one uh, worked perfectly, yeah. And, okay. and one small thing to add about elastic bands, because I, I love having people demonstrate this one, is elastic bands, uh, when they stretch and they contract, rather than being electrostatic, it's actually a, um, a thermodynamic um, mechanism. And you can test this if you put it on your lip or on your cheek, which is sensitive to temperature change. And if you pull it apart quickly, you'll feel it slightly warmer and let it contract and you'll feel it colder. And so you can feel that it actually heats up as, uh, as you stretch it and it cools down as you contract it. 
I don't, like it's I don't know, I, I find that pretty neat to see. Yeah, I saw a very nice uh, experiment that I'm going to recreate at Science on Stage, which was one of these really wide bands that are used for exercise. And they had a wave, sinusoidal wave. And when you stretch it, okay, you can really see how uh, the wavelength increases. So really cool for talking about Doppler effect, just a, a, a nice, easy model. Oh, and it, it works re really well. I use that. Works really well. Cool. Okay, are we are we on to the uh, pencils and uh, the water bottle? Uh sure. Yeah, yeah, and, and that should be the the last one of the the session. Okay, I, I'm really uh, interested to know how you, you're doing this one, Michael. But let's let, 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 let's go with it. So, it, yeah, I, I, it, I've got... it, it's not as pretty as yours because it's a, it's a it's a homemade cap, but it Don't it, worry. it does Don't worry. the trick. Okay, so I, I've got a water bottle here. Hopefully, everyone can see in my camera. Okay, and most water bottles, when you turn them upside down, the water comes out. So a little bit of water came out in this one, okay, but it stopped. And the interesting thing about this bottle is that you can actually put pencils in. Is that working for you, Michael? Wow, cool. Give it a push. Yeah. And do you notice, everybody, that the pencil really shoots up? into the bottle it doesn't just slowly it actually hits the top okay so uh, something is not quite in order with this bottle so i'm going to reveal mine and you can reveal yours michael if you wish on the top of my bottle i've got a special cap that you can buy from a magician shop or you can 3D print. Um, hopefully you can see that there. Okay, that's cool, Michael. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's just one where with, with the knife, like an hour before the we connected, I made a hole. Brilliant. And you can make quite a wide hole in it because um, as many of you know, there is this film, water is a fantastic, material liquid in that it creates a surface tension okay so the surface tension is formed on the water bottle that's a bit like to move on okay Will and um, that keeps the water in the bottle okay but when we break the surface tension pencils will flow in and the shooting up with the pencils into the bottle that's up thrust so uh, what i really want to do is to put a force meter on this to actually measure the up thrust of the pencil now michael's done a really good job on making that hole uh, if you get a vinegar bottle okay you can do it with with those toothpick toothpicks that root and um, michael had earlier on so that's the pencils in the bottle. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. Did, does anyone have any uh, feedback or questions on those uh, magic experiments? And, and I think that brings us to the end of all the experiments. I, I mentioned by email, and I forget if I remember to mention it at the beginning of the session, if anyone has any announcements that they'd like to make, like if you have any projects going on, things you want to invite people along, please feel free at the end of the meeting here. Um, I've got a couple that I'd like to make myself. Uh, those of you who know me well know I usually talk about these couple other things. <clears throat> so of course, this is uh, one of my experiment share meetings where I invite teachers along to share uh, short experiments with each other. The next one coming up is for Earth Day Eve. So similar to how we celebrated Pi Day Eve a month ago, 
the day before Earth Day. So Earth Day, for those of you who don't know of it, don't celebrate it, um, is April 22nd, celebrated in a number of countries. So the day before that, at seven at night, there's going to be experiments share with anyone who wants to share any Earth Day themed experiments. Uh, there should be something from the Canada Agriculture and Food Museum, where I've been a teacher and resident. Uh, those of you who remember Julia Rialdon from Italy, she's got a bunch of colleagues who are eager to present things. I think Astrino said, well, no, I know Astrino said he'd do something on earthquakes and uh, seismic stuff. So anyone who wants to see any of those or has any Earth Day experiments to share, please do. Uh, in May, there's going to be a silent one. Again, for anyone who hasn't heard the explanation behind that before, it's to try and level the playing field for those who don't speak English as a mother tongue. So no one will be allowed to talk during the experiment. Uh, you'll notice in the sign up form, I asked when people prefer for that. I think the lead is Sunday, the 8th of May. I'm going to check that again, but whatever date was most popular, I'm going to go with that one uh, and have it for that. Two or three other announcements. Uh, yes, International is the student version of this. Uh, I put a link for that uh, pretty much everywhere I sent to you guys. Let me know if you're interested in having students join this kind of thing. I run Particle Physics for Kids virtual science camps, which are Zoom sessions with different uh, particle physicists mainly and a number of teachers as well. Next one's on Tuesday at, need to double check, I'm pretty sure it's at six. Um, Tuesday at six and it's gonna be the low energy ion ring at CERN. So if you're interested, please uh, either come along to that or send kids to that. Uh, two other things to mention, I have a standing offer. Uh, I'll send lenses to anyone. So those of you uh, who saw me on stage at the festival, you saw my card scope, cardboard microscope. And if anyone wants a set of them, if you send me a photo of any experiment from here or anything else I've done or coordinated doing that's being repeated in your school, then I'll send you a, a set of 10 lenses to uh, make microscope attachments uh, for for phones there. Uh, interesting thing about that, I made that same announcement after a Scientix webinar I did last year. And I think, and Paul can correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's how Paul and I got in touch in the first place and started emailing back and forth. Um, so please do take me up on that offer. It's always great to connect with more people that way, but especially to, to see things that live on beyond the classroom. Um, Hopefully you're not too tired of hear me, hearing me talk because there's two more like suggestions or ideas. Uh, one thing I've been mentioning to the French Science on Stage team is to try and organize a set of workshops uh, that I'm calling Bring the Festival to You. And the idea behind that is to have hybrid workshops where we'd be giving workshops like running different sessions for teachers, but inviting some of our favorite projects we saw from the festival or some uh, of our favorite like experiments we saw to jump in and give a short session as well as part of a workshop. So if anyone's interested in joining via Zoom on some of those workshops that'll be hybrid, presence, distance, let me know. I've, I've asked some of you guys in person already. Um, also, if it's an idea that you think would work well in your own country, if you want me to share anything, I'm always happy to jump in and share. Um, and I think there's probably enough announcements for me. Does anyone else have any other like announcements or projects that they want to mention? Doesn't sound like anyone's eager uh, to, uh, to take me up on that offer. But if, if you do have things where like you want to tell your teachers about something, like please feel free to let me know. I'll, I'll include it in an email when I send out or things like that. Uh, I, I think that brings things to a close. As I mentioned, I'll keep the Zoom session open. If anyone wants to stay on, hang out, virtual pub style, uh, with drinks or without. But a lot of people probably need to go, want to go. So, uh, like the, so uh, thank you for joining, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for sharing experiments. And I hope people continue to share experiments forward with colleagues locally and especially with your students. Uh, so thank you, everyone, and have a great evening.